Hello, this is an assessment of an Ibach upright piano called Elegance C2, made in 1989. Now the piano is 118 centimetres high. Uh, it's been in store since 2008. Uh, it's now 2017, so it's a long time to be in store. Um, the, I haven't unwrapped the piano stool. It belongs to the client and uh, we're just assessing it to see what work needs doing. We have actually already cleaned the piano, spent uh, about three hours cleaning it. I've cleaned the brass pedals but decided not to clean the logo here because it looks very elegant as it is um, but obviously you can shine up and be um, shiny brass if, uh, if that's required. Uh, music, uh, material and music stand is slightly shrunk here and just lifting a little bit. Um, not too significant but just a, a, a slight bit. I love the side of the lid prop here. It's so beautifully made. In fact the piano is uh, such a high standard of manufacturer generally. This is a beautifully styled wooden celeste um, that uh, is a practice pedal. So if you want to play quietly, you just put it down there. In fact, it doesn't quite stop off at the top if we listen. It needs a bit of adjustment there, but uh, beautifully made. And I love the way it slots out. If you watch this, as I lift it, it just pulls straight out. And that's a, f a wonderful system. A modern Forex, new Forex co have copied that system and really is the best there is. It's such a uh, tuner friendly way of getting the Celeste out. Now, of course, the most important thing is the tone and the touch, especially around here. And uh, a typical high quality German piano just has a real depth of tone. Let's compare it with uh, uh, other ones. This is a similar age. Uh, Silo, it's an 80, uh, 1990, and very similar, really little depth of tone there. Let's compare it with, say, a Japanese piano. Here's a Yamaha U1, uh, very even, very pleasant, and of course, uh, very mass produced pianos and very consistent, but it doesn't have the kind of um, the special quality that you, the German one has. Here's a, here's a similar height Beckstein that we have in stock. Again, you've got a much uh, greater depth of tone. If you're tuning it, you notice the depth and an interest of harmonics that isn't in the uh, very high quality Yamahas, but it just isn't, hasn't got it. And this one does. Here's a new Forex. I'm more interested in the Yamaha, but not quite the depth that you'll get on, on the uh, really well-made West German pianos. Uh, this is the system of the Forex. Uh, Celeste, as by the way, it's um, been a copy of the Ebark, really uh, excellent design. And back to the Ebark, just a superb depth of tone, um, so that's delightful. Now, having said that, there's one thing about Ebarks that I've um, noticed in others, in modern ones, and that there's a contrast here between the bass and the treble. You can hear that, it's more obvious when you come up to it. What we, I call boomy, um, it's uh, too strong a tone at that point. Uh, so it's all right there, but gradually gets too strong, and it's quite common. You get it in like, some Yamahas as well. This is a, the Forig. That's the same note, and those, uh, <coughs> the, as you see, that you get double copper, uh, sorry, bichord copper wound uh, to sort of dovetail in as it were the tone so that it um, doesn't contrast so much that's more that's very common here's the Beckstein 2007 this one and it, it matches better and then when you come past the break point there's always a slight contrast but it's minimizing it here's the Yamaha U1 and really very even so uh, putting the bichords here is, is, the, is the right answer to not to end up with the contrast between the bass and the tenor. So back to the ear bark. So really that's the only, if you can call it a fault, that I would pick out. The action is ha beautiful and what's really encouraging is it's been in store for a long time but it must have been very good climate controlled storage because the action is not sticky at all you often get sticky action after a long time in storage we, we don't recommend putting pianos into storage we prefer to encourage clients to to get someone else to look after the piano and we'll look after pianos for you um, if they're good quality pianos uh, if we can rent them out to somebody it's better to have them in a house 
than it is to put them in the store for a long time. This has a beautiful bass, right down to the bottom bass. Um, that's excellent. Let's listen to one or two others to compare it with. This is the Sila, same sort of height, 116. And again, wonderful bass. And the 2007 Beckstein. Not so good as the others, it's still a very good bass, but um, the others are so exceptional. Of course, that bottom bass isn't used that much. It's more important, the tenor, and that's a beautiful tenor on the Beckstein. And well dovetailed in the tone there. Well, the Forex is a bit taller, it's 120, and that has a similarly good bass. And the U1, these aren't new bass strings. Uh, this is a, a, the period of U1s, which is really the best, U1, G and H in 1971. Um, so they could, if they were renewed, it'd be slightly stronger. But as I say, you don't use these bass strings so much. They aren't as good as the German ones. In fact, if we put German bass strings on the Yamaha, it usually improves it, but not exceptionally. So back to the Ibach. So the Ibach and the Sila have the best bass strings, though they aren't the tallest of pianos. So that's an assessment of an Ibach Elegance upright piano, 118 centimetres high, and uh, made in 18, sorry, 1989, and really fabulously constructed superbly constructed piano what makes me want to play it more and more is the tone rounds here but also the touch is very very finely set up there's a lot of difference between a piano that's really well set up and germans were the ones who needed how to do it the best in the 1980s was one of the best eras for pianos and certainly for the modern piano compares really well with a couple of pianos in stock, a Sila and a Beckstein. Very similar, very, very high quality. Around here, there's a slight difference between the bass and the tenor, but in actual fact when I'm playing it, it doesn't worry me that much. It's a notable, uh, when I showed it to you earlier on, it's very not noticeable, but when you're actually playing, Unless you're coming up from here, and then you can hear the difference, but it's it's very pleasant sound anyway. Now you might have noticed the one thing I haven't mentioned, which you've probably been thinking of all the time, is the colour of the piano. Um, I wanted to assess it mechanically, but uh, it is very, very deep green colour, very beautiful green colour, and there's no milkiness in it, so it's very well polished as well. And um, we've had to clean that. That was the work we've done so far so thank you very much for listening